Hi, I'm Brandon, the owner of this unit that you've rented. And I've got Adam here from Village RV and we're gonna do a little bit of a demonstration slash walk around so that if you have any questions that you might have had or are having while you're trying to set up the unit, hopefully we can answer some of them. We're gonna start and do a little bit of a walk around and then we'll go through the hitching process, the awning process, and then the other unit or the other items inside. Sorry, this is Adam. So hello everyone. <laughs> um, so let's uh, start with there's some there's some adequate storage in the front space here um, and it carries all the way through so this would be where you would store like your dirty items to try to keep the unit as clean as possible you'd store your dirty items in here uh, your axe and your blockings and that kind of stuff um, right below that is the jack it's an electronic jack so make sure you have some blocking underneath that I'll retract this a little bit so make sure you have some blocking underneath that uh, jack and there's one on all four corners. Make sure you don't utilize this to level the trailer. It's just there to stabilize it and remove the, the shakiness of the trailer. Also at the front of the unit, there's an electronic jack, which we'll touch on, but you're gonna wanna first off level the whole unit with this front jack and then use these retractable jacks on all four corners to just stabilize it. If you try to use these jacks to level the trailer, you're going to wreck them and then you're going to get a bill for repairs. Correct. <laughs> um, Adam can uh, show us about these fancy stairs that I've never seen before. So these are a little different than what you'll probably see on most things out there nowadays. But really simple. They just fold up and down. It has uh, adjustable legs on each end. So if your ground's a little uneven, you just pull out the pin here and you can actually adjust each leg. These fold right up inside the coach. Make sure your door's not hitting, open that all the way, and then that actually locks in into place. Um, to put them down, open it up, you're good to go. Make sure you, when you are traveling uh, with this unit, uh, when you're traveling with the unit that the door is locked because at times um, it's not locked and you hit a bump and it opens up, then you're gonna have a door swinging around when you don't know. So make sure the door is locked uh, upon transport. Moving along, this is our water heater um, section. Um, Adam can touch on uh, the components of that. Yeah. So before you go to use your water heater, always pop this little clip off, open this up. Just make sure that your anode rod is in, just like at home. Make sure that's put in place, just so you're not having water pool everywhere. This is a gas or electric water heater, so you can run it on either or. The two switches are inside the coach, which we'll show you later. Um, Gas heats up a lot faster than electric. So basically electric, you can plug in as soon as you get to your site. You'll have nice warm water in about 25 minutes. If you heat it with the gas, about 10 minutes. There's two outdoor speakers and an awning. We will touch on the awning when we get inside and back around to the unit. There's some outdoor plugs. Um, some nice clean rims. Make sure you return it like that. <laughs> Outside kitchen, you've got a two burner cooktop. Now this is, the way you hook this cooktop up is you have a connector hose underneath and it actually connects right down here in the bottom. To connect that, you just pull back on the, on the valve, put the hose in, boom, you're connected. Now you don't have to use that quick connect only for the cooktop itself. You can actually plug in a little portable uh, barbecue if you want as well, if you're not using the cooktop. The other jack is at this back corner. You can see it. So you just want to retract that there. Make sure when you are traveling with the unit that the jacks are all put away. And fully, all the way up. All the way up. Yeah. And that's it. You don't want to sit there and just jack on it. You just want to uh, take some of the weight off. One other thing that I want to touch on is when you are closing these units, do we want to just close this yep. up for them? So when you're when we're closing these units there's a little there's a little clipping feature here to hold the door up don't just rip it off or you'll wreck that and we'll have a repair cost there but it's important to make sure that all the latches are closed upon transport um, again with the wind if the wind opens up 
and catches under the backside, it could flip this door up and then we've got some damages. So the biggest thing is we want to make sure that the unit comes back the way it's sent out and uh, that's one thing that we can do to prevent any damages. As well as locking the door, I recommend locking all your storage compartments as well. It's a little 751 key that you're going to get. You just simply put that in there, turn it, lock it. It just prevents that from coming open on the highway at all and losing your stuff. Coming around to the back of the unit, uh, not a lot to see here other than the plug-in area and an outdoor shower. Uh, so if you want to clean off your feet or anything like that before you get into the unit, uh, you can use this setup. As long as your water heater's on, you'll have hot and cold. You come back from the beach, you got sand all over your feet, stuff like that. You can rinse off, keep that out of the, keep that out of the trailer that you're renting. Spare tire. Um, also, this is the power adapter. So there is a, this has two options for power. So there's, um, so there's 30 amp plug connect. So this would be if you want air conditioning. If you don't have this plug in on your site, you're not going to be able to have air conditioning. This adapter will come with, and this will give you basically lights and maybe a fan. Um, the unit will require full 30 amps to run the AC and the other major components, but this will at least allow you to operate it with all of its lights and stuff like that. It runs on LED light fixtures, so it doesn't use a lot of power, but in order to get the, the big thing like the air conditioning, you need that 30 amp power. So make sure if you are renting a site that uh, you make sure that it's got a 30 amp service if you're looking for air conditioning on a hot summer day. Coming around to the backside where the slide is, um, we've got our septic. It's generally gonna be stored inside of this, inside of this hitch. So you pop this cap off, and it's slid inside of there. Why? Because it's filthy. Always wear gloves when you're doing this. There'll be gloves inside of a little um, operational box that'll be inside the trailer. So it's very important that everybody that rents this unit empties the septic before they return it to me um, because somebody else is coming to rent this unit and is going to anticipate that the septic is empty. So if everybody does their job, everyone, everyone will enjoy their, the unit. I'm down here at the septic dumping site. You're going to have two dumps on this particular model. Uh, one's going to be your gray, which is all your shower water, your sink water. And then one's going to be your black, which is your toilet water. So when you're, uh, when you're dumping, you're going to just basically, you're going to pop off the cap. Oh, nice. <laughs> that was great. There's a, little a turd folds up. <laughs> you're going to pull the, just keep going. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, keep so that in there. Pull that off. That'll be one of those. You'll slide this on. You'll turn it to the right. You'll put it down into your into your uh, dump site at the campground. Um, you're gonna dump your gray first, and then you're gonna dump your black. The reason for that is your gray is gonna rinse out your black hose once your all the black water out of your hose once you're done. Now another very very important thing that you want to do while you are dumping your black tank is there's going to be a water hose that's going to be supplied with the trailer. You're going to hook that water hose into here. And then when you're dumping, there's actually going to be a water faucet there at the, at the dump site. And you're going to run that up into there. You're going to turn on the water. And what that's going to do is that's going to rinse out the black tank itself as you're dumping to ensure that when you push on the indicator, uh, indicator board on the inside of the, of the trailer, that it shows that the tank is actually empty. If you don't do this, it's gonna show that your tank still has bl black water in it when it actually doesn't. So this needs to happen every time you dump. And so which one, can you identify again, which one is gray and I explain or black and tell us what is what? The handle, the gray handle is here for this and the black handle is there. So it's pretty simple. What's gray? Gray is shower water, sink water. Black is toilet water only. Now we've got our slide. This unit has a, a dining room slide. You have to make sure that the slide is all the way in. Obviously with transport, it would lo look a little funny traveling down the highway with this unit. The slide out, it's got a fairly large slide, so you want to make sure it's all the way in or all the way out when you're using it, not half in or out. It will leak if you don't. It, yeah, it'll leak if it's not all the way out. It's yeah. got a little bit of a seal there and it's, it, it needs to be all the way out. If you're parked for an extended period of time, grab yourself a little stool and a broom and sweep off the top of the slide before actually putting it back into the coach. Okay, let's continue around. Also one obvious thing when you're transporting with the trailer, make sure all the windows are closed. I just noticed there's a very large window there and 
if that's left open, it's probably not going to be good. So here we have your, your water connections or your fresh water fill. So the top one here, as it says, fresh water connection, it's nice and labeled. This has a 43 gallon fresh water tank in it. So what that'll do is it'll allow you to haul some water. I do not recommend hauling, a, like filling this right up. Maybe put five or 10 gallons in it and that's it, but don't ever tow with a full tank. If you're at a seasonal site, Maybe you're just using it in the driveway before your trip out. You can hook up that water hose that's going to come with the trailer directly from your house faucet, directly into the trailer. You'll have water on demand. It won't actually fill up the tank. It'll just give you water when you open up any faucet in the trailer. In addition to that, my hose is going to have a pressure reduce um, addition, addition to the, to the hose. Some campsites that you might go to might have insane water pressure. And that's great, but not for this unit. It's not designed for a crazy water pressure. So the, the pressure reduced valve basically reduces the water pressure so that it's manageable for the unit. So it's important for you to always use that no matter where you are to, to avoid blowing up water lines inside. This is the propane unit. If you are using propane, you have to fill it every time. So it needs to come back full so that the next person can take it and go on. Um, you're also not going to want to travel with propane on at all. It's illegal. Um, so if you're trying to use, trying to pre-cool your fridge or something like that before you go to site and run it on propane, you can't do that. So you want to, the night before, maybe load your fridge up, plug it in, let it get cold. And if you're only going an hour or 45 minutes, it'll still stay cool enough um, from that travel time when you unplug it at your house to go for you not to run it on propane. So do not run it on propane. Um, this is a protective cover on top that has uh, little screw flaps. They're pointed backwards so that this flap, if it disconnected and it was in the wind, it would naturally just close. So make sure this is closed and make sure these tanks are closed for transport. There is a, you wanna to touch on the inside of this? Yes, so there's a little, uh a little slider valve in there you can flip to either left or right or you can put it in the middle and it'll actually pull from both. Uh, these are both 30 pound tanks and again like Brandon said always make sure that these are closed during transport. When you are um, when you are using and renting the unit turn this just to one tank. Pick one tank use that so that you know you're only renting this for a short period of time most likely so the reality of you using both these propane tanks is unrealistic and maybe not even using them at all but if you are going to use the propane, um, flip it to one tank so that you only have to replenish one tank versus trying to replenish both. To get the tanks out, I think this thing just lifts off. Yep, this just peels right off. We'll make, sure, yep, make sure those are nice and tight. And this just lifts right off. And then you're going to want to disconnect this. Uh, if you're going to like a gas station, I guess, to fill up your propane, yep. uh, most cases they'll help you uh, do this, but yeah, just a wing nut in the center that'll loosen this bracket, slide that up, disconnect this again, make sure the valve is off, slide out your tank, get it filled, put it back in in the reverse procedure. This is the electronic hitch. It has a manual option. We're going to touch on this whole unit when we bring the truck up and explain to you how this works. Um, so uh, yeah, let's, let's go get a truck. You'll see this bottom pad come off the ground. As Soon as that comes off the ground, you can stop. You can lock this into position. Make sure that this is always all the way forward, okay? Then you're gonna jack it up again, okay? So you're gonna watch that pad now go down to the ground and you're gonna watch the truck actually lift up a little bit. But always make sure that that's locked in. The whole reason on why you're doing this is so to make it easier to put your equalizer bars in on each side. If you were to just simply try to hook up your bars with it all the way down, it would be very, very difficult. So the more weight that you take off, it's actually gonna be a lot easier to put those bars into place. 
Also, if by chance the battery on the unit is for some reason dead or the power is dead, there's a manual uh, crank that you just put inside of there, which will be inside the camper. Okay, I'm gonna come around to this side. I'm gonna show you how to put the bars in. Basically, all you do is grab this end, place it into there. You're gonna hear it lock in, okay? And then you're gonna swing that all the way back this way, okay? I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, okay? Now, again, the more weight I take off of here, the easier it's gonna to be to get that up on top of there, okay? So you can either do it by hand and give it a like that, or you can use this fancy tool that it comes with. Once you get the bar in place, then you're gonna take this little L bracket, you're gonna slide that over top. That's gonna to protect that from ever bouncing out on the highway. And you're gonna put your cotter pin on, okay? And you're gonna make sure you do that on both sides, okay? Once you're done with your bars, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna take all your, you're gonna take all your weight. You're gonna let that all the way down again. And then you're gonna stand back and you're gonna have a look and you're gonna make sure that everything's level, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. If you're a little bit high in the front, that's okay. Cause you're gonna add some weight to the trailer, but we wanna be as level as we possibly can be. Once you're off the ground and everything looks perfect, you always want to make sure to hook up your safety chains. Once you're located here on the front, drop those down, drop that down, okay? Uh, as well as you're going to want to plug in your seven pin adapter. What that's going to do is that's going to give you power to your brakes. That's going to give you power to all the lights on the coach your brake lights, your signal lights, your reverse lights, everything like that. So you simply, it's got a little notch, open up your plug at the back. Before you rent the trailer, make sure you have a seven pin. Plug that in, you're good to go, okay? When you're, when you're hooking your chains up, always make sure that you're crossing your chains. So you look at how they're put on here, I'm always taking the one that's on the left and I'm crossing it over to the right, okay? The reason I do that is because if this were ever to become disconnected, maybe this breaks, when it falls, this will cradle it. It'll actually hold the trailer up from smashing into the ground, okay? What you're gonna see here as well is your runaway brake cable, okay? You wanna make sure that that's always connected and has some slack in it. Going back to saying if the hitch ever broke or you ever became disconnected from the trailer, what this is gonna do is this is gonna actually pull out of the trailer because it's connected to your truck and it's gonna apply the brakes on the trailer so that your trailer doesn't go skidding down the highway into the ditch or potentially kill somebody. So I always do this, I always wrap it over there and then hook this up again underneath here. Lock that into place, we're good to go. Always leave a little bit of slack, make sure the chains have a little bit of slack. Now, there's a, another cotter pin that's gonna go or a safety pin always make sure you put this every trip okay this slides through here hooks on to here this is going to stop this latch from ever popping up on the highway and disconnecting the trailer you want to make sure that's always in i always do a safety check once i'm finished so make sure your um, jack is all the way up okay and i mean all the way don't have it hanging halfway down you hit a big bump you'll bend you'll break that make sure your your seven pin wiring is hooked up make sure your chains are crossed make sure they're latched Make sure your cotter pin is in here on the hitch and make sure this cotter pin is in. Then you're going to do a complete walk around. You're going to check all your lights. So you're going to check your clearance lights on the top of the coach. You're going to check your brake lights. You're going to check your signal lights. Okay, and you're going to do that by having somebody press on the brake and push on the signals, etc. So now that we've shown you the whole outside of the camper, we've shown you how to hook it up. If you have any more questions, you can give me a call or text at any time. But theoretically, we should have answered almost any question that comes up. Again, my number is 306-533-4433, but it's also in the uh, um, documents. So if you need me, call me, but uh, we'll go inside and take a look at the unit. Uh, show us around. Come on in. So this is the in inside of the coach. Uh, as you can see, we've got a, sp a spot here for, for sleeping for two. Typically you'll see kids sleeping in this spot or maybe one adult. Uh, I'm going to show you how to put that bed down for sleeping. It's really, really simple. Basically, first thing you do is just pull off the top of the table. You're going to have two legs sitting there. 
Both can just go underneath, just like that. And now this table is actually gonna sit right on the lip in here. So I always set in one side first, I lift this left cushion up, that sits right flat on there, and then you slide it forward. Uh, it's basically like a game of Tetris after that, you slide that forward. And you've got your sleeping area there. Bam. You do have storage under each side of the dinette. You can access the left side just through here. Put all your extra camping gear, food, stuff like that right in there. Um, to put that up, again, really simple, just in reverse. And we're back to the dinette. So. It's almost like NASCAR. Basically, yeah. We should time you. <laughs> Can we do it one more time and time you? <laughs> Pantry for all your storage. Uh, drawers below for all your camping storage for food. You can actually take those shelves out if you want and put them on the bottom and you can hang clothes in there as well as there's a hanging, uh, a hanging rod in there as well. Light switches for the coach. This is all LED throughout. Um, you're going to be able to manually operate pretty much each and every one of them by pushing on the center of them. There's a little button or there is individual switches throughout the coach that you'll find. Uh, we'll move into the, the front. Sure. We'll go and check out the, the main living area, the main uh, adult bed up in the front. There is storage under this bed to, to uh, store anything under there. You basically just lift up the bed. It is on a shock system. As you'll see, there's a whole bunch of storage under there. Each side of the bed, you've got your hanging wardrobe closets on each side, left and right. You'll have plugins on each side as well for plugging in your phone, your iPad, computers, things like that. Fireplace? You want to touch on the Yeah, fancy? this coach actually has a lovely fireplace that's not just for looks. This actually provides heat. So if you don't want to burn up propane, maybe it's not that cold outside, maybe it's May long weekend, uh, you can actually fire that up with the remote. You can set different ambiences on it just by uh, pushing a couple of different buttons. And then again, like I said, you can crank this thing up, I think, to like 85 degrees or so. So that'll take the chill off on a cold day for sure. Uh, the pro to that, if you're plugged in, if you're at an electrical site, you don't have to use up your propane that you're paying for. So, What's that little switch there at the bottom? Underneath here? Yeah. So that switch there will shut off your fireplace. Now this is really, really important. That's just a normal house, basically, toggle switch there. You won't be able to um, use the fireplace and the microwave at the same time. So if you were to have this running and someone wants to throw something in the microwave, you're gonna pop a breaker, okay? So if you're thinking I need to use the microwave, shut your fireplace off, shut the switch off, then you can use the microwave or vice versa, whatever you wanna use more. Um, it's just too much of a power draw for 30 amps to, to, to work both of them at the same time. This unit uh, will have two TV, or will have a TV um, right in that spot there. Um, it's uh, coming soon. Once the TV's hooked up, that will all be connected through your entertainment center. So you're gonna have two speakers, two or three speakers on the inside of the coach. Like Brandon explained earlier, you're gonna have two on the outside of the coach. You're gonna be able to shut those off. There's actually a button on here, zone one and zone two. So zone one will be just being able to hear the music or whatever you're watching for a movie on the inside. And then zone two will be the outside. So you don't have to have your neighbors listening into your your tunes, the movie, whatever you're doing. So you can shut that off. Um, it's a Bluetooth. It has USB plugins on the front, so you can run your phone in there. Uh, you can listen to music, everything like that. Uh, it's got an aux in as well. Uh, that's pretty much it about the entertainment center. To close off the main, um, the main bedroom in this trailer, you can use these privacy curtains just by simply unvelcroing them here from the wall and sliding them over on the track. Just give you a little of that, little bit of that added privacy. And again, when you're done with them, always put them back. Um, when you're traveling, you don't. The last thing you want is these flying around, getting tangled, and then you end up having to buy brand in a new set of them. Uh, we'll move into the kitchen. I'll talk about a few awesome things about the kitchen in this coach. This particular model is actually equipped with a central vac system. The central vac system hose is located under the bed with a couple different heads, a couple different nozzles. Um, to, to hook that up, all you do is basically slide this to the right, plug in your hose, just like at home, say if you were to have central vac, and flip on your, 
flip on the button, flip on your vacuum. There's enough hose in the vacuum in this vacuum system uh, to reach the all the way to the back and all the way to the front of the coach, and then actually out if you wanted to maybe do your mat outside or anything like that. There is a little paper bag in there. Um, I recommend popping this open um, before you use it. You see that little bag right there. Make sure that it's actually stuck on to the input. Not that you're just blowing dirt into this box and you're going to have to clean it out before you give it back. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the stove in this unit. Uh, this, so this, this is a flush mount stove, so it gives you that added counter space. You can work on this on this top. Uh, I don't recommend cutting or doing anything like that. You will scratch it. This also serves as a backsplash. So basically bifold, cooking bacon and eggs and anything like that. You're not spraying up your back wall. Uh, three burner cooktop, like I said, it does have the oven option as well. So if you want to, you know, throw a pizza in there, or anything like that, you can cook with the oven. That's fine. Um, if not, slide the shelf out. You can put your bread, put your buns, keep them fresh, stuff like that in there, right? Uh, to fire up your stove, um, it's all on a diagram here. It's very straightforward. Turn that on. You're going to hear propane and then just fire. Bam. You've, you've instantly got heat and it's got, you know, your normal settings like at home, hot to cold. Biggest thing that I want to touch on with the stove, if you are going to use the oven and the burners, clean them. Once you're finished cooking, don't immediately close your bifold top. Uh, this will still be warm. And if it's too warm, you'll actually crack the top here and then you'll be buying Brandon a new top as well. Um, something I want to touch on while we're talking about the stove is when you pull up to your site, your propane again is always going to be off. Um, you're probably going to want to fire things up potentially like your furnace um, or the stove itself. What you'll need to do to ensure that your furnace actually fires on the first try is I always recommend coming over to your stove, opening up a valve, waiting to hear it, firing it up. What happens is it takes a little while for the propane to actually get to the heater or to the stove. So if you were to fire up your thermostat, fire up your heater and expect it to fire right away, it probably won't because it takes usually about a minute or two for that propane to get there. So I always come here first. I let that burn off for, you know, under 30 seconds. Then I know my, my uh, water, my water heater and my furnace is actually going to light the first time. So if you're cooking inside, obviously turn the fan on and the light so you can see what you're doing. Also, I noticed there's a cool little light here. I don't know what this yep. fancy. Damn. Does have a microwave. Uh, this is a, convec a small convection microwave. Uh, again, you cannot use it with the fireplace at the same time. Another thing you're not going to be able to use at the same time will be your AC. You won't be able to fire both. It's just too much of a power draw. So again, if you're running your AC, shut it off to use your microwave or vice versa. Do you want to talk about this beautiful, beautiful fridge? Yeah, absolutely. So this is an automatic gas or electric fridge. Um, when you pull up to your site, it's going to be very simple. All you're going to do is push power. That little green light's going to come on, okay? It's going to show an A and then a little plug-in. So what that means is it's in automatic mode. Simply put, uh, as long as your propane tanks are open and as long as you're plugged in, this will alternate between either or if needed. So for example, if the power goes out at the site, it will automatically sense that. And as long as your propane tanks are open, it'll automatically flip it back to gas, okay? And vice versa. If you ran out of gas and you were plugged in or you had battery power, it would flip it back to electric, okay? And you can change between the modes if you want. If you don't want to run it on the automatic mode and you want to run it solely on electric or solely on gas, you can do that just by simply pushing mode. So now that's electric. Now that's gas. So we'll go back to that again. So automatic, so either or. It does the work, electric, gas, okay? Um, another option on this little board is set your temperature. So that's obviously the lowest, second, third, fourth, fifth. That'd be the coldest. I recommend running it usually between three and four. It's plenty cold. Five, you're going to end up freezing a lot of your vegetables and stuff like that. Uh, when you're finished your camping trip, shut off your valves shut off the fridge by simply holding that shuts it all down it's a fridge and a freezer top and the bottom this is an eight cubic foot so you have tons of room to store all your goodies for your camping trip 
Make sure these are always closed and locked as well. You don't want these coming open when you're traveling down the road. Uh, I was talking earlier about um, popping breakers when running multiple appliances at the same time. If you do happen to not catch that right away and you do pop a breaker, this is your breaker box right here. Open that up, you just push right on the center. It's clearly labeled with everything here on the right and on the left. You'll probably see one of these breakers slid over to the left. When the breakers are not popped, they're all on the right. Okay, so again, you happen to pop something, open this up, shut off your appliances, flip it back, and only use one at a time, like I said. Can you show us pop one? Yeah, so it'll look basically like that if one was popped. You'll come in here, you open this up. Oh darn, I popped the, the microwave. Pop it back, you'll hear this fire back up. You're good to go, you should be able to use your appliances. So when, right when you come into the trailer on your left, there's a little door here. This is all your, your basically your complete control panel for the trailer. So you'll see on the top left, you have an in and out for your slide. So pretty straightforward. A lot of the time, um, the slide systems need to reset themselves every single time they're used. So what I recommend is if it's all the way out, push in or push out first and then in. And then the slide is gonna come in all the way. Again, like Brandon said, make sure it's all the way in or all the way out. Very, very simple. Just hold the button. And then to put it back, to put it out, you need to make sure that you're decently level in your sight. If you're on like a hill or a really bad angle, your slide's not gonna wanna come out. You're gonna be phoning Brandon wondering what's going on. It has nothing to do with the camper itself. It's just that you're not level, okay? Uh, awning, awning switch is there. We're gonna get to that later. This is your, uh, another component of your service center. This is your monitoring center for your battery, your fresh water tank, your black tank, and your two gray tanks combined, okay? So to see where everything is at, you're gonna push on your battery, okay? When you push on battery, it reads full. Um, if you're boondocking, if you're not hooked up to power, you're gonna slowly see that dissipate over time. Your fresh water capacity, right now, of course, it's gonna read empty. Um, that will tell you how full it is. Uh, black tank, it's gonna read empty right now. Again, keep an eye on that throughout your camping trip. You don't wanna have that overflow. Check that every couple days. Um, gray and gray two. This does have two gray tanks, but they do feed into the same tank. Um, the sink is your gray and the shower and the sink in the bathroom is your gray. And again, that's combined, okay? Um, to turn on your water pump, uh, what your water pump is gonna do is gonna give you uh, water on demand, gonna give you water pressure on demand in both your shower in the bathroom, your sink in the bathroom, and your sink in the kitchen itself. Uh, to turn on your water pump, you're gonna simply flip this switch on, okay? Now you always, always, always wanna make sure that you have water either hooked up to the trailer and turned on, or have water in the tank. If you just flip that on and there's no water, it's gonna sit and run and run and run and run. You're gonna burn it out. You're gonna owe Brandon a water pump, okay? <laughs> water heater. On this particular model, it's both in gas or electric. I explained a little bit about that earlier. Um, gas gets hot right away. Electric gets hot a little, takes a little bit longer to heat up. Um, I usually recommend using the, uh, the electric side of it. So basically pull up to the site, get your camper level, get everything sort of set up, flip on your electric, flip on the electric switch and you'll have hot water in about 15 to 20 minutes, okay? And again, make sure there's water in the trailer, always. If there's no water in that water heater, you're gonna have an element heating nothing, you're gonna fry the element, you're gonna owe somebody an element. So this coach has both um, heat and AC, just like at home, and just like at home on a thermostat. So you can set this to different modes, high, low on your fan or auto, okay? And then you can set your hot and your cold, just like at home. Simply scroll through everything by pushing mode. You'll see your fan first. Then you'll see cool on the bottom, so you can set your cool. I highly recommend putting this around like 21 to 24 and opening up some windows. It's gonna keep it nice and cold in here. 
And then of course your heat, if maybe you're camping May long weekend, you're camping on some nights where it's a little bit cooler, you can set your heat. You'll, I've, I've turned that on now, you can see or hear that the furnace has kicked in. If you decided, oh, I didn't want my heat on and shut this off, okay? I've now shut it off. You're still going to hear that fan run for up to five minutes possibly. Don't be alarmed. As long as it's shut off on the thermostat, that will cut out eventually. It's just doing its job. Don't think something's wrong with it, okay? The heat is ducted centrally through the floor. So you'll see floor ducts, two in here and one up in the bedroom. The air conditioning system is ducted through the ceiling. All these little white ducts, you're gonna see two or three in the main area. You're gonna see two in the main bedroom and you're gonna see one in the bathroom, okay? If you come back from the beach or you come back from the lake and you're super hot and you wanna cool down right away, come stand underneath the coach and turn it to quick cool. That's not quick cool. That's gonna distribute more cool throughout the coach. You push it back the other way. It's gonna push it right down into this area, get you cooled down right away. So these are oversized double over double bunk beds. Uh, this, these can sleep too. Believe it or not, you can actually fit an adult in here or two if you need. There is plugins on each wall and there's a light in each bunk for reading and there's windows in each bunk as well. Um, you can charge your phones, your laptops, your iPads and, and, and all of that. Um, the plugs on the, you see on the wall that are going to be used for charging, those will only work as long as you're plugged into an exterior wall unit, okay? Or maybe at home, but they will not work just simply off the battery. There isn't an inverter in this coach. So you can see I'm a fairly large person and I can fit fairly well on the side of this bathroom. That being said, I would recommend that you don't drop bombs in this toilet because you don't need to. Most campsites that you go to have bathrooms, use the bathrooms. You have to use approved toilet paper only for this that breaks down inside of the tank. You also have to drop one of the tablets in that reduce the odor. So there'll be a bag inside of this cabinet that will house the um, basically smelling pods. You drop one of those in there, you run a little bit of water, it'll start to do its thing so that you're not getting that odor traveling through. Again, no bombs in the toilet, just uh, liquids. Um, the showers here, again, I wouldn't recommend using it primarily because your campsite's gonna have showers. So you gotta think about like the unit right now that you're in is sparkling clean and it needs to come back that way. So in order for you to avoid unnecessary cleaning, just don't use some of these items. They're there for you to use if you need to, but then you've got to clean them as well. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Um, lots of storage inside of the bathroom to brush your teeth and that kind of stuff. Again, do that inside of the campground bathroom. This awning is worth about $3,500 to repair. So that means put it away. Before you leave the campsite, um, $3,500. And it, and it can blow away very easily. It also provides a lot of value. You can see that the door kind of um, interferes with the drop down mechanism. So make sure the door is out of the way and clear so the awning can go out or in. If it's coming back in, it'll crush this door inside of that. You don't have a little bit of a problem. So inside the control is here. You're gonna want to awning out. You're gonna want to make sure the awning travels all the way out and you're gonna see it stop, there's gonna be a little bit of a flap hanging down and that's when it's complete. So that's when you're done. Don't, don't, do not put it out any further than that. You're gonna overextend it and then when you put it back in, it's actually gonna rewind backwards if you go any further than that. This awning also tilts on each end. So if you're sitting under your awning, all of a sudden it starts to rain, you're gonna to wanna to tilt it either to the left or to the right you can easily and simply do that by just pulling on this arm right here. There's actually a sticker on it that says pull down to adjust. Just pull down like that. It's going to kick the rain. You're going to want to keep, keep an eye on that to avoid it building up with water and actually collapsing on itself. Okay, you can do that on either side. Don't worry about having to push that back up before you put the awning in. That's perfectly fine. You push in on the switch inside the coach. It will come in no matter if one side is tilted more than the other.
Pretty cool, eh? Remember, make sure your door is free and clear. So one of the other biggest things with this unit is because it's brand new, I don't, I know that we've been talking about some things and concerning you about, you know, damaging or repairs. We want you to enjoy this. We don't want you to overthink it. It's a very simple unit. All you have to do is just respect it. Take care of it and get it ready for the next family. We don't want any downtime with this unit. Um, this thing will be booked out. Both units will be booked out for the entire summer. So it's important that it's ready and travel ready every time it goes out. Um, like we've said several times before about um, damages and stuff like that, it's really important. I know that we're jamming that into you about respecting the unit. It needs to come back the way it went to you because in most cases it's already rented out for the next family and we don't have time to clean it and prep it for the next family. So you're essentially doing that. So it's kind of a pay it forward kind of thing. If there are damages or things happen, let us know right away and so that we can address them and get them fixed whenever the time permits. Understand that if you do damage something, um, there's going to be a bit of a cost. So that's not going to come out of your damage deposit. That's going to come out of an invoice that's going to be sent to you for those expenses. Village RV um, has kindly allowed us to use their facility as a drop-off and pickup location. You're not going to communicate with them at all. They're not going to have a clue about what units going where or whatever. I'm going to know all that information or my office. So you're going to always make sure that you reach out and communicate with my office, not village. The camper units will be parked out front for you to pick up. And hopefully this video explains to you enough in detail on how to hook up and disconnect. If you do have any questions or concerns and you're at all unsure of hook, hooking up, reach out to me. And then at that point, maybe village can assist you if, if I'm unavailable. But in most cases, I will be made available to connect with you on the hookup and dismount. Um, or not necessarily the dismount, but at least the hookup. You're going to drop the unit outside, and you're going to text me and let me know that the unit's dropped outside, and then I'm going to let Village know to either put it away or get it ready for the next family that's going to be renting it. Um, if you have any questions, again, my number's readily available to you. I'm also going to, inside this unit that we haven't shown yet, have a little bit of a manual that has some of the important elements um, about the rental inside of it, so that at any point, if you have any questions or concerns, you should be able to either A, watch this video, one more time or go through that manual and kind of resolve any of the issues that you may have. I think that's all. Hopefully you're enjoying your unit and uh, enjoying summer as a family.